Hello and welcome back to Chat the Brain with Dr. Ghislaine. I'm Dr. Christine Ghislaine, board certified clinical neuropsychologist. Moving on to our next domain of functioning, I want to talk to you today about two pieces, which is attention and processing speed. We'll break down attention first and we'll move on to processing speed second. If I had a quarter for every time a parent came in and said, attention is a problem, my child is unable to focus and pay attention. Or a quarter for every time an adult came in and said, my 75 or 85 or 95 year old parent isn't paying attention to what I'm saying when I'm talking to them. I think they have an attention problem. I would be a rich person, let me just say it right now. Adequate attention is part of everything that we do. If we are not attending, if we are not focusing, if we are not looking at and engaging with whatever it is that we are doing, it's not happening. I wanna couch this idea of attention and attentional variability in the context of development because we certainly know that a three-year-old's attention span is not and should not be the same as a 19-year-old's attention span. These are definitely things that grow and mature over time and so sometimes it is completely developmentally appropriate to have difficulties focusing and sustaining attention. We also know that contextual factors are extremely important to talk through. So for example, if someone is depressed, if someone is anxious, these mood states are really going to impact their ability to focus, concentrate, and pay attention. I can think of times in my personal life where I've been concerned for someone or anxious about something and being able to sit down and hammer out a bunch of work is much more challenging because these mood states are impacting my ability to focus. That said, attention is not a single entity. There are lots of facets of attention or types of attention that a neuropsychologist will look at. So let's talk through a few of those. Focused attention is paying attention and being vigilant when monitoring information. So really that's just engaging and being attentive to the information that is coming to you. Are you able to focus and tune out distractions so that you can really pay attention to the task at hand? Another type of attention is divided attention. Divided attention is straight up multitasking. So chewing gum while taking a walk calling someone on the phone while driving. You're doing both of these things simultaneously. You're providing energy and attention to both, but both are happening at the exact same time, so the attention is divided. Another facet of attention is sustained attention. So sustained attention is exactly what it sounds like. Can you keep focused? Can you stay engaged in a task that is longer, more monotonous, um, perhaps a little bit boring? Can you keep focused and tune out distractions for longer spans of time. And finally, there's alternating attention. A fancy word for this is dual processing. So can you do two things, but instead of doing them at the same time, like multitasking, it's doing one and then the other and then going back. So a perfect example of this, a mom who's trying to cook dinner while helping her son with his math homework. She's cooking for a little while, keeping in mind not to let a pot boil over or how many minutes are left on the pasta while still going over and helping her son, okay, we're on question number 10, we're moving on to question number 11. So it's keeping track of multiple things at the same time, but not necessarily doing them concurrently. So given that we've talked about all of these different types of attention, it's not going to surprise you to hear that a neuropsychologist will use multiple different types of assessments to look at attention. Again, as I've talked about in pretty much every video that I've done about our domains of functioning, attention is not its own little bubble. While we can talk about it, we know it impacts lots of different things. So in a neuropsychological evaluation, there might be things like tasks on a computer that assess attention, paper and pencil questionnaires that assess attention, specific performance-based tasks. So there are lots of different ways that attention is measured, and certainly we know that lots of different things can impact our attention over time. Thus, attention is a pretty big component of the neuropsychological evaluation, and it is likely that it will be assessed in multiple ways throughout the day so that there's a really nice snapshot of attention. As I mentioned, I'm going to do processing speed, which is the second part of this video, um, because you know, while there's lots to talk about in terms of our speed of processing, it's pretty self-explanatory. So a neuropsychologist will administer multiple processing speed tasks. This is to better understand how quickly, how efficiently you complete tasks. This is done in a variety of different assessments, some of them looking at just how quickly and efficiently you move through, through things. 
Also, there are times where it might be how quickly you react to things or your reaction speed. Speed is certainly something that we want to make sure is looking good in terms of a neuropsychological evaluation because we know the certain brain regions that would be impacted if there are reductions in processing speed. Certainly, if a child is having reduced processing speed, this can impact them in school where they are not able to quickly and efficiently, let's say, copy information from the board and then they're missing crucial information during their learning. On the other end of the spectrum, an adult who has slower processing, that's important for us to understand in terms of their reaction speed in, God forbid, an emergency. So for example, if a car juts out in front of them as they're driving, how quickly are they reacting to that? These are just a few examples of how processing speed is, number one, really important to understand in a neuropsychological evaluation, but also number two, how deficits or difficulties in these areas might impact an individual. Tune in for my next video on language.